Linear equations and their graphs. So far we've been looking at graphs in this class. And if we look at these four graphs right here, we all notice the same thing, that they're all lines. They represent linear equations. And we know with the first graph that it's downward sloping. There's an inverse relationship between x and y, so that tells us that the slope is zero. The second graph tells us that the slope is positive. A horizontal line tells us that the slope is zero. And a vertical line tells us that the slope is undefined. But what we really want to understand is what are the equations behind these graphs? So this week we dedicate our time to linear equations. And a linear equation is just an equation that when graphed produces a straight line. So all of those graphs that you just saw are all representative by linear equations. Now variables in a linear equation do not have roots or exponents not equal to one. For example, you can't have an equation, a linear equation, with x squared or the square root of x. If you have an equation with multiple variables, x and y, these variables cannot be multiplied or divided by one another. For example, an equation with x times y or x divided by y is not linear. So equations that do not meet these above criteria are nonlinear equations, which is something that we talk about next week. Let's just go through some examples of things that are not linear equations. So the expression x squared is not linear because there's an exponent on the variable. 2x, plus 2x times y plus 4 is not a linear equation because you can't multiply the two variables by each other. 2x divided by 4y is not linear because you can't divide two variables. And finally, the square root of x is not linear because you can't have a square root sign on variables or any root sign. Now these are linear equations. 2 squared x equals y, so that 2 is a constant, that 2 could have been a squared, uh, and this would be fine. 2x plus 10y equals 0 is a linear equation, and q sub d equals a minus bp with a and b as constants, that's a linear equation. Now linear equations are most often given in the slope-intercept form, and there are other forms of linear equations, what we really want to focus on for this course is slope-intercept form, and that's just y equals mx plus b. And y is that dependent variable, and x is that independent variable. So those are the things that can change. y depends on x. m is the slope, it's a constant. And b is the intercept, or the vertical intercept to be more precise, and that also is a constant. So for example, these three equations are all linear equations y equals 2x plus 10, y equals 60 minus 3x, q sub d equals 150 minus 5p. So when you look at an equation, a linear equation, you should be able to figure out immediately what the vertical intercept is and what the slope is. So the vertical intercepts for each equation are shown, uh, are shown now. So in the first one it's positive 10, in the second one it's positive 60, and in the third it's positive 150. And then that slope is going to be that coefficient, that coefficient um, next to the x variable. So in this case, the slope is 2 for the first one, negative 3 for the second, and negative 5 for the third. So it's really important uh, that when you look at a linear equation, one that's in slope-intercept form, can, that you can immediately pull from it the vertical intercept and that slope. It makes things a lot easier later on. So let's do a, a quiz yourself. In each of the following equations, determine the vertical intercept and slope. And now, without actually graphing these equations, state whether the graph of the equation would have a positive or negative relationship between the two variables. So the first equation is y is equal to 25 minus 1 half x. The second equation is y is equal to 20 plus 2x plus 30. The third equation is q sub d, which is equal to p upper bar minus bp, we are told that p bar, p upper bar, and b are constants. And the final equation is c is equal to a plus mpc times y, where you're given the following information. a is a constant. It's called autonomous consumption. But all you need to know is that it's a constant. c is a consumption variable. y is a variable, income variable. mpc is also a constant called a marginal propensity to consume. 
So pause this video right now and try to answer these questions. All right, so for the first equation, the vertical intercept B is equal to 25, and the slope is negative 1 half, which tells us that there's a negative relationship between x and y. So when x increases by one unit, y falls by 1 half. The second equation, uh, you had to do a little bit of addition here to figure out that the vertical intercept, i.e. when x equals 0, uh, y equals 50, so the vertical intercept is 50, and the slope here is 2, so that's a positive relationship. The slope here tells us that when x increases by one unit, y will also increase, but by two units. Now the third and fourth ones may have been a little bit tricky for those of you that haven't seen these sorts of equations before, and that's totally fine. So in the third equation, this is what is called a demand curve. So it re represents the relationship between price, P, and quantity demanded of a good. So here, the vertical intercept is going to be that P bar, and the inter or, I'm sorry, and the slope is going to be negative B. So we're going to say that it's a negative relationship, assuming B is greater than zero. But if you said, hey, I don't know what B is, I don't know if B is positive or negative, then that's fine too. And then finally, this is what's called a consumption function in equation four. C equals A plus MPC times Y. The vertical intercept is equal to A, whatever value that's going to be, and the slope is going to be that MPC. And unless you're told what that constant is, you don't know what the relationship is between consumption and income. Let's do one more quiz yourself before moving on. So the graph to the right illustrates a linear relationship between X and Y. Specifically, it shows some function Y is equal to MX plus B. So based on this graph, which of the following statements is true? B and M are both positive, B and M are both negative, B is positive and M is negative, or B is negative and M is positive. Pause the video uh, and try to answer yourself. Looking at the graph, we see that B, that vertical intercept, is positive. In fact, it's 100 and that the slope is negative. So M is negative because this curve is downward sloping. Sketching or graphing an equation means just finding those ordered pairs that make the equation true, plotting them, and then connecting them. So what in slope intercept form, sketching is really straightforward. So the first method to sketch a linear equation is just to create a table of ordered pairs and then connect them. What that means is that you evaluate the equation at different values of x, i.e. you plug in values for x and out pops some y. So let's sketch y is equal to 2x plus 10. So I'm going to create this table. It's going to have three columns for now. It's going to say x, and then it's going to have the equation y equals 2x plus 10, and then the ordered pair. So if x is equal to negative 2, y is going to equal 2 times negative 2 plus 10, which gives me 6. So my first ordered pair is negative 2, 6, which is shown on the graph here. I'm moving over from the origin, I'm moving left from the origin 2 times, and then moving up 6. If x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 2 times negative 1 plus 10, which gives us 8. So our next ordered pair is negative 1, 8. If x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 10 equals 10, which gives us the ordered pair 0, 10. And then finally, when x is 1, y is equal to 12, and when x is 2, y is equal to 14. So these are just a few ordered pairs. And what we can do is connect these points, connect a line with a ruler uh, that goes through all of them. So this line right here represents the equation y is equal to 2x plus 10. In other words, if you just see this graph here, you could tell yourselves, listen, every single ordered pair on this graph, not just the ones that are marked with big circles, every single ordered pair solves this equation. But there's an easier way to graph lines. Because we're graphing just a line, it's sufficient to find just two ordered pairs and draw a line through them. So what I'd like to do is find the vertical intercept and horizontal intercepts. That gives me two ordered pairs and connect the line. But note that you can find any two ordered pairs. Let's go through an example. 
uh, for the same exact curve, y is equal to 2x plus 10. So what I'm going to do now is first find the vertical intercept. Remember that vertical intercept is that b. In other words, we're going to evaluate the equation at x equals 0. We're asking ourselves when x is equal to 0, what is y? So I'm just going to plug it in, and I get an ordered pair 0, 10. This is my vertical intercept. And now for the horizontal intercept, I'm going to have to do a little bit of algebra, a little bit of uh, rearranging, and that's okay. I'm going to plug in 0 for y, and that's going to give me my horizontal intercept. So I have 0 is equal to 2x plus 10. I'm going to rearrange and solve for x, and I get x is equal to negative 5. So my vertical intercept is 0, 10, and my horizontal intercept is negative 5, 0. And then I just use a ruler and I connect these two points. It's the same exact curve as the one we plotted previously with that table of ordered pairs. All right, and let's just do one other example using uh, the vertical and horizontal intercepts to graph a line. So let's sketch y is equal to negative 2x plus 8. So first I'll find the vertical intercept. I can look at the equation right away and say that it's 8, but let's just go through the math. I'm going to set x equal to 0, and I get y is equal to 8. So my first ordered pair, that vertical intercept, is 0, 8. Now I'm going to find the horizontal intercept. Remember, horizontal intercept is that ordered pair where y equals 0. So you're asking yourself, what is y when x is 0? So I plug it in. I get 0 is equal to negative 2x plus 8. I rearrange, do a little bit of algebra, and solve for x is equal to 4. So the horizontal intercept is 4, 0. So I could connect these two points with a ruler, and there's my line. All right, so here are four graphs, A, B, C, and D. Which sketch below represents the equation y is equal to 25 minus 1 half x? Pause the video and try to answer. All right, so let's look at this equation, y is equal to 25 minus 1 half x. So just by looking at the equation without solving anything, we know that the vertical intercept should be 25, and we know that the graph should be downward sloping. So we know the graph should be downward sloping because that slope is negative. It's a negative half. So that immediately gets rid of graph C. And we also know that the intercept should be a vertical intercept is 25, which gets rid of graphs A and graphs D. So you actually didn't have to do much to figure out that the answer is graph B.